the cosmic ray is the first high energy particle we know in the history. There is some the very high energy object in the universe, including a supernova, high energy galaxies, and in this place, you have uh, some um, strong electric and magnetic field, which accelerates the particle to really, really high energy. And eventually, those end up in, on the Earth. Cosmic rays are constantly showering down on us throughout history, throughout time. There's, there's, there's millions of cosmic rays passing through, through our bodies, through Earth. We still don't know a lot of things about cosmic ray, the where it's coming from, and how to reach this kind of high energy. So these are still um, big topics to study for people. Lots of the compositions were built with data from a neutrino observatory in Japan called Super Kamio Kande, which Tepe works for. Super Kamio Kande is a giant cylinder. It's so big that the Statue of Liberty could fit inside it easily. Buried in a mountain in, in rural Japan, um, it's filled with over 11,000 golden light bulbs. They're basically sort of reverse light bulbs. When they see light, they convert it into an electronic signal. One of these bulbs is so powerful that if you lit a match on the moon, it would see it. Just one. And basically any cosmic rays passing through it, it will, it will detect. A very clever chap called Chris Ball uh, thought of a way to convert the live data from Super Cameo Kande and have it converted into sound. And it, it just absolutely blew my mind that we were pulling live data from this experiment that has won various Nobel Prizes in a mountain in Japan to my little laptop running through my music software and I would just be sort of jamming with the data and I'd just be like, what chords am I going to get? And I'd just, I'd use that as the building blocks for composition. Some of these rhythms that it's created are just, just the sort of rhythms that I adore. So it was just, it just felt so wonderful that once I'd got hold of this data and sonified it, it felt like something that I would write anyway, that I'd attempt to write. During the performance, we are going to pull some live data from Super Cameo Kande and improvise with it. So we don't, we, we don't know what we're going to get. Um, it'll just be completely random. It's a challenging for artists, I think. Sometimes you hit a lot of a cosmic ray, and then when you want to make some move, you know, in the music, and then cosmic ray stop, you know. So it's a completely yes, it's a random. And uh, but uh, Chris likes the idea, you know, you react, you know, what the universe gives you, and then you perform. We have a device in the room called a cosmic watch, which also measures cosmic rays. Every time one passes through this tiny square, it will create a signal, which we have converted into MIDI and to DMX. And then we've connected that to the Snape Moulting's concert hall lighting rig. So the colors and brightness will be dictated by cosmic rays throughout the whole performance, which is really, really exciting. So this performance is the first iteration of Subatomic and I'm delighted that King's College London have commissioned the piece. Next steps involve more research and development and the creation of an audiovisual installation that will be controlled by cosmic rays. I really want to immerse audiences within this fascinating world and to have some interactive elements, hopefully creating the feeling that there's some sort of cosmic call and response happening. We'd love to take it to festivals, science museums and art galleries and explore this mixture of lecture, experiment and new composition. Mm -hmm.